hello everybody welcome to my channel it's so irritating that teen mom wednesday and thursday i seem to have all these mishaps okay i will spare you the gritty details let's get right on into this review name of this review is floating down the river and guys when i tell you that this whole show can float down a river into a sinkhole and flush itself that's how terrible i think this freaking reunion is eight says that she woke up this morning and she's a little bit angry april says about what happened last night Kate says it could be a lot of different things. She doesn't know where it's coming from. So Jade is here with Miss Margaret and Macy saying that she got a free show last night. Cheyenne says she didn't know where to look. Cheyenne then says so many situations and Jade says disasters everywhere. So Ashley says that Roxanne and Brianna started all this crap but she did not want it to go as far as it did. So Mighty Mouth, AKA Roxanne, still running her mouth about the situation, saying that she could see the rage in Ashley's face. Roxanne, can you just let it go? There's even a little bit of remorse from Ashley. And she was even like, I'm not sorry. Brianna says last night was super intense. I wonder why it was intense. I mean, I wonder what could possibly made it so tense. <laughs> Brianna, because y'all like to pronounce her name completely different. Brianna says, today she's okay. She's alive. You're only alive because uh, Ashley wasn't able to pop your head off your body like a freaking bobblehead doll. Then Brianna says that she's ready to see what's next. So Brianna says that yesterday was a blur and Roxanne says to her, I have never seen you like that. Then Brianna says she was upset that she wasn't able to touch Ashley because she spit on her. So Brianna tells Roxanne that she needs, she meaning Roxanne, needs to talk to Coach B. And Brianna goes on to say that she needs to speak to Coach B herself because she wants to get an input on someone looking from the outside. Brianna says that she's working on her stuff. She's still trying to control her emotions. She says, it's so weird because I have no real issue with Ashley. But then Roxanne says, but she has issues with you and her mom getting in your business. Roxanne and you are all in their business. God, you're getting on my nerves now. Brianna says, and the other moms even approached her too. Like you're on the internet talking about people's kids. You mean adults, Brianna? Talking about people's adult kids because they, they're literally adults that can defend themselves. And then Brianna says, that's not okay. Roxanne says, let's just try to get through the day. Macy says she's kind of wondering what the day holds to a night like last night. Macy says that it was a shit show and everybody could have handled themselves better. Macy says all she knows is she was in the bathroom and it sounded like a tornado. All they're saying at the table, Miss Margaret, Macy, it, all they're doing is just recollecting over what happened already that we saw already. So there's no need to repeat this. They're just saying how it was crazy. Jade says that there's just some people you just have to keep over there. She says, and it's always been that way because of unpredictable behavior. Jade goes on to tell us in the world that Ashley crossed the line with the whole spitting thing. She says that she thinks the entire household right now is just disgusted. Cheyenne says it triggered so many people. Cheyenne says that she hasn't really seen Kate. Amber hasn't left her room. She said that Kate says she was really struggling today. Diane tells us that Kate texts their group chat this morning, basically explaining that she's just not feeling good after that fight last night. And Cheyenne says, I'm gonna say that April could not have been sober during that moment. And Cheyenne says that she feels that April is getting very triggered. So Kate is here with April and she's telling April that she's just been feeling anxious all damn day and it will not go away. So Caitlin says that she's just having a lot of anxiety and panic and she feels the need to sit and talk with her husband and just be with him. She says, Tyler is literally the one person that has been through all of her mental health stuff with her. She says he literally can talk her off ledges. Sometimes she can't even talk herself off of. Kate calls Tyler and says that she's been having a really rough day. She's been dealing with a lot of stuff anxiety wise, says that she thinks it is lack of sleep and then on top of that opening things up different wounds being reopened kate says like when she was telling her mom in the mud pit about how she's sick of feeling like the perfect child she's sick and tired of april not believing that she has her own voice and opinions kate says that she's never told her mom these things and she's thinking that that's where some of this anxiety is coming from Kate asks tyler if he wants to come to where she is in oregon he says of course he will not those words but yes my words april says that she hopes that 
Kate's anxiety doesn't have anything to do with the situation with her and the mud pit. She does not enjoy seeing her daughter upset. Brianna comes in and says good morning to everybody and Margaret asks how are you and she says fine she says how's your mom she says she's fine she's coming so Roxanne comes they say hi to her and like she has no response she has no good morning Katie you are so rude anyway someone off camera I don't know which mom it was it probably was Miss Margaret again asked Roxanne how she was Roxanne says that she's tired exhausted mentally Miss Margaret, why am I calling you Miss Margaret? Because because you're my elder, okay? And I don't, I'm not gonna say Miss Roxanne, that's dumb. I just feel like it doesn't sound right. Miss Margaret says to Roxanne, when you have to do all that, it's mentally exhausting. Do all what, um, Miss Margaret? Bump into people without saying excuse me? Throwing water on people? Yelling and screaming at people? Yeah, that is very exhausting. I would say that's physically exhausting. She had the choice not to do that. I feel like a lot of you moms on this show because y'all are on camera, y'all can't actually see what's happening, so I'll cut y'all some slack. But, um, y'all really painting Brianna and Roxanne out to be these freaking angels. Y'all can't be farther from the truth. So Kaya says, you know, you can only control yourself just for so much. You can only take so much. But what is Roxanne taking, though? Because nobody asked her ass to go over there and knock into tea. And then after the fact, this big and bad did not even want to apologize. In fact, my recollection of last week's episode, she didn't even want to acknowledge that she pushed her. She said she didn't push her. We clearly all saw that she did. So Kaya says if this was her, she would have flipped this whole house upside down. And she ain't lying because I've seen Kaya mad. And then Tiffany said, I had to hold her back. And Kaya says the spitting thing really pissed her off. So then Kaya gets on here and tells this bold faced lie that Ashley tried to spit on Kayla at the reunion. And of course, Kayla's over here co-signing the lie. Kids, you took it too far. You took it too far. You took it too far. You don't fuck about my face. You don't fuck about my face. I should spit on your mother face. I didn't see anywhere in that clip where Ashley attempted to spit on her. And you can look at Kayla's face and you could tell she was freaking lying by the way she was looking at Kaya. But anyway, Kaya goes on to say that she doesn't think that this is over. She says she doesn't know how long these two are gonna be gone, T and Ashley, and she doesn't think that they're gonna be gone forever. So Macy says she has no idea where Ashley or T is. She has not seen them this morning. Macy says that she doesn't know if they're coming back. And then Jay tells Brianna, I hope you don't get sent home. Brianna says that talking about last night is getting her worked up. She hopes that she can stay because she doesn't want to go home. But she says, honestly, she's still mad. She got spit on. So Amber says she's feeling like she's always felt the entire Team Mom franchise. <laughs> Amber says that she's feeling super tired and just doesn't feel like herself. So Kate comes out and says hello to everybody. She says that she has anxiety, but it's not a good idea to just stay up in the room. So she comes out and she says, I didn't want to talk to you guys. And they said, why? And she's like, you know, the way she's feeling with all the anxiety and stuff. And so Cheyenne says to her, have you tried grounding? Based on um, Caitlin's response, I can tell you what grounding is without Googling it. And Caitlin's response was, I've been meditating and she's been drinking CBD oil by the gallon. I don't exactly know what it is. I do know from what I recall, just from my memory, that it is an ingredient that's in marijuana. So I'm assuming it's something that you take to calm down. So maybe that's what grounding is. Okay, go me, go me. Context clues. Um, Cheyenne says, have you spoken to Ty? And Kate says, yes, I've spoken to him and he's going to be coming later. And Jade is here and she's saying, when Kate comes in um, and she's upset, I feel bad for her. <laughs> I really do not like Jade and... Um, that's how she sounds when she talks to me. So Cheyenne says, last night was a lot and it should have never happened. Cheyenne says that she finds it ironic that Ashley and T say that their anger issues are what make them who they are, but they can't see that it's triggering people. So Miss Margaret asks April, how you doing? And April says that she just wishes that she could take this feeling away from Caitlyn, but unfortunately she can't. So Caitlin says that she's supposed to meet with Coach B because she really needs somebody to talk to. Macy says that she feels bad for Caitlin, but she doesn't want to overstep her boundaries. Caitlin says she needs to talk to Coach B because she's still having lots of anxiety and panic. Kate says she's trying to figure out what's triggering this. So now enters Coach B. 
So Coach B asks Caitlin how she is, and of course, Caitlin says she's not good. Caitlin's just telling her about how she's having anxiety and panic, and she really doesn't know where it's coming from. So Coach B asks, could it have been something that happened last night after the event, which was the mud pit? Or did something else happen? Kate said that, yes, there was a big fight last night, but she doesn't think that that's the reason why she has anxiety. So Coach B says that you were obviously triggered and triggers take us back to the very beginning of the wound. So Kate says that she thinks she has a panic disorder from her childhood when she was growing up. Her mom had her young. There was drinking a lot. April admits that she drank a lot and she drank every day. April says she drank every day when she was growing up and for a long time. And Kate says to April that she's forgiven her for those things, but maybe there are some unresolved issues. And April says to Kate, maybe it's because I was drinking with you the other day. You crossed your own boundary. So this is what triggered you, maybe. And then Kate said, maybe. So April says to Kate, and you don't like me drinking. So B says that's definitely a trigger. So Kate says that she faltered on her own boundaries. She says to April, I told you that I don't want to be around you when you're drunk. And here I am drinking with you. So then Coach B gets off that subject and says, let's talk about the household as a kid. Kate says that the household as a kid was very chaotic at times. Kate says there were a few times that her mom was passed out and she was passed out there with her friends and she took a blanket to cover her up and give her a pillow and basically play the mother role to April. Coach B asks Kate, who was taking care of you when you were doing those things? And Kate says, I was. And Coach B says that you still have residue in and over you from your childhood. Coach B asks Kate, what did she want from her mom that she didn't get as a kid? And Kate says, quality time. Kate also says to April that she would have liked to have more predictability and emotional stability. So April apologizes to Kate and says that she's sorry that she wasn't able to give her that. But the best she can do now is try to be there for her now. So Kate says that sometimes you have to bring up past traumas to move forward and heal. And she's asking herself out loud, did she really forgive her mom for these things? Or is it something that they need to do more work on? Because it's really they, not I. It's, it's you, both of you. So after the commercial break, I know there was a commercial there, darn it. Kate says that I would have liked to get more quality time from you. And April says, I'm just sorry. She says she can't change what it is now, but she can try to be a better mom to her in the future. And April says that she wishes that she could go back and fix it, but she can't. April says that she would like to do that now. Try to have quality time with her is what she means. So Kate says that she would like to have a mother-daughter friendship. So Coach B says to April, can you commit to moving forward? And basically April says that she'll keep in contact more with Kate and she'll try to check in more often with Kate and not be buzzed when she's around the kids and when she's around Kate. And April also commits to communicating better, basically talking and listening without yelling. So now we're group hugging. So Kate says after the meeting with Coach B that she's feeling a lot less anxiety. She can feel within herself that she's able to process things better. So April says when she first saw Coach B, she didn't want to give her a chance. April says that she knows that Coach B is here to do good things. The ladies are playing Jenga. Hip, hip, hooray. Next scene. So Macy asks everyone, what do they want to do today? Cheyenne says, what do you want to do? So Macy has this idea since there's a river nearby to get some tubes and they can all float on the river. All the younger ladies are down, but the mamas aren't. They're going to stay home and cook. Basically, Macy wants them to have an adventure after the night they had last night. Miss Margaret asks, are Kate and Amber going? What about them? Macy says that she doesn't think they're going because they don't feel well. Macy, I know damn well you don't consider those girls your sisters. I'm going to need you to stop lying and stop making me recap weird stuff that you would never normally say on a normal day. Okay, but basically Macy says that she misses Kate and Amber. Uh, they bring the excitement. I don't know about Amber, okay? The only excitement she brings is lip balls on her comforter at home on her bed, all right? I'm just saying. So these five ladies getting their rubber, whatever you call them, and now they're going to be floating down the river. And I'm telling y'all right now, I am skipping every single part because ain't nothing to review. They're just floating in the water and screaming. That's all they're doing and laughing. So now we're here with Brianna and Roxanne. They're about to have their session with Coach B. Brianna says that tensions are high right now. So Brianna says that she doesn't think talking with Coach B is going to solve all of the issues, but it's a start and she's really trying to grow and prosper. Coach B says, I heard last night was crazy. Coach B says, what happened? Brianna says, I don't even know where to start. 
So Brianna says that she thinks there was a lot going on last year. And Brianna continues to not take accountability. Whore, her, whore. <laughs> her nor her mama took any accountability for any part of the situation that happened the night before. So Brianna says that Ashley and her mother continue to talk crap. She guesses things got heated at the dinner table. And then Brianna says she got some spit on her. And then Coach B asks, was it physical on both ends? And then Brianna admits to throwing the hydro thermos or whatever the hell that was after Ashley spat on her. But that's besides the point, she says. So Coach B says, okay, so you threw something. Then Coach B says, this is crazy. And then Roxanne says to Brianna, oh wait, you threw a hydro flask? And Brianna says, yep, it was this close to hitting her. And Roxanne then says to Coach B, she thinks that there was a lot of mama bears. Roxanne says the reality of it all is she thinks that there's a, a lot of mama bears there that will do what they have to do for their daughters. Coach B says there's a healthier way for a mama bear to protect her daughter cub. And you know, T was open for that and so was Ashley except Roxanne refused to let them talk. Coach B says it's not always easy because you want to automatically go into fight mode. Don't I know it? Because mess with me, that's only if I'm not thinking ahead of time, okay, you know what, I have to control myself. So Coach B says, yeah, we're quick to go into fight mode, but it doesn't get the best results, like in this situation. So Coach B says, so moving forward, what do you think it looks like? So Brianna says that I really don't want anything to do with Ashley. I don't need her in my life. We all signed a piece of paper that says that we wouldn't physically attack each other. We all signed a piece of paper that we're not allowed to touch each other. We're not allowed to exchange body fluids. We're not allowed to do any of those things. So you already crossed the line. And Brianna, so did you. I mean, I guess you didn't see that because you missed. If you would have hit her, you would have been crossing the line. Just to pick up that thing and throw it, knowing it was a heavy metal, cross the line as well. So Coach B says, all right, well, I want to support you through this process. So what do we have to do? Brianna says that she wants to be here. So Brianna says that she wanted to experience the tools that Coach B has to help them. And that's why she didn't want to leave. And Coach B says, well, I'm here to support you through that. Mental health is a priority. Brianna says moving forward, she can't be in the vicinity of T nor her mama. Moving forward, I can't be in the same vicinity as Ashley or even her mother. Like, them. Like and the grandmothers are cooking for the ladies that went floating down the river. So Coach B is here and she's about to visit Ashley and T and Ashley says she doesn't have a single regret and if it all played back again, she would do the same thing. So T says with everything that happened last night, she hopes that Coach B can help them move past this incident. Ashley says that she's very happy to see Coach B. She feels like she has a lot of stuff going on. Ashley says aside from being there, there's a lot of things going on personally and Ashley wants to pick Coach B's brain a little bit to see how she can be more able to process things. Coach B asks, how are you ladies doing? I know we had a lot going on. So T says, I'm not just disappointed in their behavior, but I am disappointed in my own behavior as well. Coach B says, good accountability. So T says it came to a full head when we came back with you. Roxanne started running her mouth and that's when I went off. Coach B says, Ashley, what was going on with you? And Ashley says, I was trying to calm my mom down in that moment. So Ashley says, instead of Rihanna trying to get her mom, saying whatever she wants to say to my mom, and T says that she says to Brianna, stop, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm, I'm the adult. I'm going to talk to your mom. But both of y'all are adults. So Ashley says that's when she activated me because you nor your mama are going to come from my mama. Ashley says one of y'all are going to have to come through me. The alternative to my spit was my fist. So Coach B asks, do you think there's a chance for reconciliation between Brianna and Roxanne? So Ashley says, seriously, she has so much going on. She can't do this. So Coach B asks, is there something else underlining going on that has you feeling more triggered? And then she tells Coach B that her husband, Barr, is in jail. So Ashley says that the police found an old warrant from an old case and that he could be looking at five years. So Coach B asks Ashley, how is she dealing with it? How is she processing the fact that he might be going away for five years? And Ashley says she's not. If she wallows in despair or whatever, she's going to be depressed. And T says this could not be at a worse time. And Coach B says, why? 
She really wanted to say it, but she wanted Ashley to say it for herself. So Ashley tells Coach B she's pregnant. Coach B says, how far along are you? Ashley says that she's around two and a half months. So Ashley says that she found out the day before Barr went to jail and then she had to go there. Ashley says that she hasn't processed anything. So Coach B asks Ashley, are you keeping it? And Ashley says that she doesn't know. Ashley says, although I want to keep this baby, the reality of it is things aren't right. Ashley feels like she's always hanging on by a thread. So Coach B asks, so do you ladies want to stay? And Ashley says, I don't want to stay. Ashley says that none of this seems worth it to her. So T says, she's relieved that Ashley wants to go home. And let's be honest, they probably weren't going to let us back anyway. So Coach B says that life forces us to make decisions those kind of decisions and this is one of those times. Ashley says that she would prefer to go home. She feels like a weight has been lifted off her shoulders. Now she can stop being fake to people that she doesn't care about. Ashley says that it was nice to see the women that she likes seeing occasionally. Ashley says in terms of her and her mom, she feels like they have a closer relationship. Ashley says she thinks the only thing that she needs to work on with her mom is not being explosive bombs. Hugs, hugs, mwah, mwah, and they're done. T says that she took a lot from this experience. She says she's a lot closer to Ashley and Ashley is very much her friend. He says that she's not just her daughter. She's a lot of her friend. So Ashley says she feels like she's learning. She's catching on to things here and, and she's better every time. And that is progress. So Kate says that the opening of new wounds and all of this stuff with Coach B has been very rough and emotional. Kate says she's going to bed and she needs to just relax for the rest of the night. So here's Tyler, he shows up and Tyler says that Kate called me, said that she needs me here. So I hopped on a plane and here I am. So Kate says it feels so good to be reunited with Ty. It literally helps me to calm down. It also helps her to process things. So Tyler asks, where's April? And Kate says she's in her own room. Kate says that one person just to talk to feels so good. Feels so good. Feels so good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't sing in this whole video. God, y'all knew it was coming. So Tyler says that was a long, early flight. Kate says you've had a long day and so have I. Kate says that Tyler Kate says that Tyler has been there since she was 13 years old. She says he knows the things that she does and he knows the things that her mom does to her. Kate says we're like best friends. So Kate says to Tyler, thanks for coming over. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for coming over. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a, a hop, step, plane ride all across the your way. No problem, anything. Okay, so now we have the producers. Why are they acting like they don't know what room Brianna and Roxanne is in? Talking about, is this the room? What number room did they give you? The numbers are literally on the right-hand side of the door. So where was the confusion? They really be playing up this uh, reality TV thing. I'm Every day I review and every day I watch some type of reality show and it's just getting faker and faker to me by the moment. And why do y'all need, why do y'all need eight producers or seven producers to come to the door at the same time? Doesn't make any sense. What did y'all think was gonna happen? So basically Larry relays the message that Roxanne and Brianna have to go home. I can't help but laugh the same way Jade laughed when they found out that Ashley and T had to go to a hotel yesterday. So Larry says, in this case, the throwing of the hydro flask was a significant breach of contract and you gots to go. You and your mama. And Larry says, it goes against the rules that we discussed. And Brianna's like, I threw that before she spat on me. And Larry says, it doesn't matter. Both were wrong. Y'all both going home. It's not one or the other. Both of you are going home. So Brianna says that she's in shock. You know, after all, all they did was sit there with their hands crossed. They didn't do anything. Of course, she didn't say that, I did. And she says she has to leave. I wasn't the aggressor. No, so I could kick no. you in your no. throat. Wasn't here to cause any problems. Brianna says that she was literally defending herself and for her to have to go home, it's so unfair and she's sad about it. So Brianna says she thinks it's BS to Larry. She says she thinks it's BS because she felt threatened. You, th you felt threatened so you climbed on top of a counter and threatened to kick her in her throat. Alrighty then, Brianna. Larry says there are definitely ways to handle that. Uh, so then Roxanne says that I understand 100%, but when you're dealing with the demonic presence like them, first of all, 
Satan has two demons sitting on our TV screens and those two demons are y'all. So what are you talking about? So Larry says, well, those wa metal water bottles could cause serious injury and they had an intended target. It's just that it missed. So Brianna says, we'll pack. I would like some space, please. And the producers say, okay, no problem. And they leave. So Rihanna texts Jade, Jade, it took you a million years to get that freaking thing out of your mouth when um, someone asked you, what did she text you? You took so long to get it out of your freaking mouth. So Jade is like, this is so unfair. Everybody in the, in the ride on the way home is like, it's so unfair. And I'm just like, all of you are annoying. I swear to God. So what Rihanna texted Jade was, they told me I got to go home. They're making me pack my stuff, which is a lie. You told them you needed a minute. And you said you'd pack up your stuff on your own. They, you know, I don't know how you lie when we have video proof. I really don't know how y'all lie when we can literally see what's going on. And then everybody in this little van has the nerve to say why. Are y'all dumb? You know what? What do you mean why? What do you mean why? Anyway, Jade says, there's no way. I'm thinking there's no way this is going on. I uh, came here to spend time with Brianna, but now she's leaving and I swear to God, guys, Jay throws a mother freaking temper tantrum like a freaking two year old. And that was the entire show. So annoying. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.